AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, my guest today is Kathy Hester because it's the first Wednesday of the month, which means it's time for Kathy Hester's Vegan Kitchen, and she's going to be making really quick, easy, and fun, giftable DIY do-it-yourself pantry staples like a beefy bouillon, a golden gravy, and an oat parmesan with a secret technique that is very important, which probably makes it taste better than mine, and I can't wait to try it. Please welcome her to the show. I don't know if it tastes better than yours. I think that's a big statement, but I do think it makes it taste like there's nuts involved. And I think that, right? And so- I think that's kind of a plus because most of the people who are doing whole food plant-based and looking to lose weight or improve certain health conditions are limiting or eliminating nuts. So, or just so allergies. I mean, you know, I think it's one of the number I've heard. It's one of the number one allergies in the world. And I, so many people that have a nut allergy. It's, it's very, very true. And I think, because you can find actually, I could walk outside my house and like trip over cashew recipes for vegan Parmesan, right? Because they're, they're everywhere. And I think when I made my oat Parmesan, I didn't know you had an oat Parmesan already. So it's probably pretty similar. Well, well, first of all, great ideas occur all the time. So in my original book, Unprocessed, which by the way, shameless plug, guys, my publisher is offering a book bundle. You can get two out of my four books today at a ridiculously low price. If you already have one, now you'll have the other. You can gift the other or a lot of people bought on Kindle. Now you have a hard copy. So these two wonderful books that'll help you get through the holidays are on special. I'll put it in the chat as well as the show notes, my little segue. But Kathy, when I first wrote the original on process, I called it faux parmesan and made it with a couple walnuts. So of course it was delicious. But then when I learned, you know, from Dr. McDougall about the fat you eat is the fat you are, I'm like, what can I replace it with? And, you know, oats are still pretty high in fat compared to like other grains, say like rice. And, and it, it, it works fantastic, doesn't it? Absolutely. And I think that's one of the things that we don't always think about oats, you know, is they are, they're inexpensive. So a lot of my staple recipes, and I think, I think two of them today, (laughs) we'll see if I remember right, use rolled oats. And one of the reasons I like to use rolled oats is because it's cheap. Mm -hmm. Could you get oat flour? Yes. Could you turn oat groats into oat flour? at your house, maybe in a dry uh, Vitamix container or something like that. Absolutely. So depending on what you want to do, you are indeed still breaking those down. So like when Dr. McDougall says like a wet starch, these are not starting off that way, but we're going to make the beefy bouillon we're going to put into soups, right? So just the same way as pasta is okay on Dr. McDougall's starch solution plan, because it's wet-ish starch, which is always confusing to me and other people. But like the um, the golden gravy, we're going to be adding whatever kind of milk or even water. And so like when I say any kind of milk, obviously, we're only talking about plant-based. So you could use oat milk and you could use almond milk. You could use whatever milk you like to use. You could make, I would not make banana milk. And but it's good. Oh, wait a minute. Banana milk is good. Not necessarily in savory, but I do it in, in sweet recipes. It's delicious. Absolutely. And that's why I was like, oh, I was about to say any milk. And then I'm like, no, any milk will not fit in this recipe. Um, and the oat parmesan is easy and delicious. And I have some here and I'll let you get just a little look. And Cheryl loves this because it looks a lot. Let me just see if I can just turn some of the brightness down. The weather like literally is going from super sunny to super cloudy. So we may be adjusting things <laughs> as we go along, but see how that kind of looks like the craft Parmesan you grew up with. It totally and- does. Do you remember that little green thing? And my mom would keep it in the fridge and it would get all hard. And it's so funny. Mm, it's delicious. And speaking about it getting hard, we, we're going to talk a little bit about these desiccant packs and I have a whole bunch of them. So this is the trick to keeping homemade spice blends and dry mixes good. So if you're on a medication or someone in your household is, save them or a vitamin. They actually, if you buy a purse, 
you'll find one in the purse. And so I have like my little pile of different assorted sized desiccant packs and I just keep them. Now, if I yeah. throw this into a spice blend, unless I keep it in that spice blend, it's going to be, you know, kind of useless. We don't want to take something from like a chili powder and put it in our oat parmesan because that'll contaminate the flavors. But so this, I have had this for probably almost a year. I, I move it into different smaller containers as I use it. So this lasts a really long time. If you're in a really, we're, we're in a humid environment. That's why the desiccant packs, if you're in Arizona, maybe you don't need them if your salt never clumps or anything. If you find that it's very hot and you're finding that some of your grains go off or you need to refrigerate or freeze all your oats, go ahead and do that with these mixes. That's going to be really extreme high desert temperatures and not everyone. But we can talk about some of this and I will, I have my little computer over here because my brain is, I feel like, you know, when you, when you're, um, iPad or computer says 20% left. <laughs> That's how I felt lately. So we're going to do a cup of rolled oats. And I'm going to just put it right here into this um, pan and some on the counter as well. <laughs> Those of you who hung out with me last night when Cheryl and I did a cozy holiday chat, we got these new um, wearable poncho blankets with a little rechargeable battery pack. It was super cute. And Fergus came and hung out with us. So the counter has been sanitized. Do not worry. <laughs> uh, I know everyone's like, no. So the trick with this really is just pay attention. This is not something you can just um, walk away from. And what I want you to do is I really want you to smell these like this. Okay, because you're going to go, okay, lady, it smells like oats. And what's going to happen is you're not going to tell by sight. These aren't going to, it's not like a roux where it's suddenly going to look gradually till it's kind of almost like a milk chocolate color, like a roux for a gumbo. This is going to barely change because oats kind of start out different colors. You're going to have to use your nose. And you're going to smell and it'll smell kind of like it did before. And then all of a sudden, it's going to blossom and open up and get toasty. And it's going to smell a little bit like nuts. And that's what we're going for. Now, with this, the other ingredients are nutritional yeast and um, salt or salt substitute. And in fact, if you're doing a salt substitute, you could just leave it out put in on whatever you're going to do. And, and if you're tailoring the salt substitute for what you're using, like I have like a salt substitute. I think this was in, it, this was in one of my books. So it's more of like a business dash taste all the things spice. And I know that chef AJ loves um, the local spicery. I do, but I also like Benson's Table Tasty because she was the first one that I was able to find that didn't have black pepper. And unfortunately, so many of the salt-free blends use black pepper. So um, I, when I make my oat parm, or I am use the Benson's Table Tasty. Well, this is the cheapest and easiest salt substitute you are ever going to make in your house. And I talk about it every time I go live everywhere. And it's just a tablespoon of garlic powder, a tablespoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of ground celery seed mixed together. I put it in the spice grinder so everything gets really well distributed and ground really small. And that also makes a good gift. So one of the things about making these staples, oh, I, it's already starting to change. It makes me so excited. Um, and you can also do this, let's say you just did these oats right now and you do it till they're toasty. You could ground them up by themselves and use them as a roux to make oil-free gravies and sauces. And it's going to add a little bit of additional flavor because of that. And I think it really livens it up. And 
because the more we can layer these different flavors on top of each other, the richer our meals will be. And richer in the good way, like richer in the healthy, delightful flavor instead of richer as in oil, salt, things that aren't really helping us. But I'm a big proponent for spice blends and things like that. And whatever your salt substitute is. But honestly, if I knew someone had just started whole food plant-based, no oil and was going SOS, I would get one of these, one of these little jars and we'll look at these jars later and I would make them the salt substitute. I would give them this oat Parmesan because you can get vegan Parmesan, but you can't get whole food plant-based, no nut Parmesan anywhere at any price. <laughs> and the nut ones now are $10. This is costing you pennies. And you can use any nutritional yeast that you like. I know, Chef AJ, you have a favorite. No, I mean, I, oh. I, okay, I, here's the thing. When I taste, do you think there's a taste in the difference in the fortified and the unfortified? We have talked about this and I have, let me, I'm trying to see, I think I have some of, oh, I have it. So, oh, here we go. I have some of Dylan's. I actually have everything over here for a nooch off that I end up talking about and then never do. Chef AJ, let's do a nooch off. Do you want to do a nooch off and uh, so let's well, yeah, see. You know, I, the thing is, is Dylan's my friend and what if it didn't win taste wise, but um, we also have to think about cost. So listen, here's the thing. Ooh. Dr. Furman says Crazy. that we want to get unfortified. We don't want those extra B vitamins. We don't need them. The folic acid, it's harmful. And I could have sworn that Dr. Greger said, yeah, get the fortified. So I think people take cost into consideration, availability. Not everyone likes to get things online. So I, you know, I like Dylan's, which is unfortified and Sari or sorry, however you pronounce it, which is unfortified, mm -hmm. KAL, which is unfortified. But hey, sometimes in a pinch, I get the Trader Joe's because it's available and it's cheap. So what can I tell you? I don't use a lot of it. So I, I wouldn't say I'm a, I'm a, what's it called? Not an, is it an aficionado when you're kind yeah, of I think that's expert great. in something? But Kathy, I've been meaning to ask you this ever because, you know, you, you saw when I taught at the McDougal program. I'm going to get I always get this question, Kathy, because there are people that for whatever reason can't have oats. What can we use instead? Is quinoa flakes the answer? I, my husband's allergic to quinoa, so I can't try that. I'm curious what a, a non-oat person would use if they also didn't want to use nuts. You guys I think these. that it would be like, quin I think you can get quinoa flakes, buckwheat flakes, other grain flakes, because that should mimic it. I actually have some quinoa flakes in the pantry that I haven't done anything with. So maybe if you remind me. Maybe one day. Yeah, we can pop on and, and try some things with that. Okay. So I use this jar funnel because evidently things want to go all the places. So we're going to use, we're using equal parts oats and nutritional yeast. So we're going to use a cup. Let's see what I'm going to get. This is going to work. It's about a quart cup. But you can change that to fit your taste. Like for me, this is a sprinkle that we're going to use on things. So if we make pasta, um, which is starch solution compatible, but you could be using, if you're on like the SOPAS program, you could put it on your zoodles or get carrots right now. Oh my gosh, I found a carrot that was like this big around. Those spiralize so beautifully. And I love the texture of spiralized carrots, spiralized butternut squash over zucchini because they're not quite as watery. And so it does say in there, you could do two teaspoons of salt or salt substitute. I'll use my salt substitute, but you can leave that out. If you wish it wasn't as cheesy or nucci, you can change these ratios to fit you. So you make mine once, then you'll blend it and adjust the taste. And then now you have your own. You can make this super fancy and we could put Italian seasonings in there. Maybe um, some oregano, rosemary. You can make it super fancy if you wanted to. 
You know what you can you know what I've put in parm before uh as a little bit of sun-dried tomato powder. Yes, and I did that with an I think the nut one I had made a decade ago. So this is just the beast. Um I got it at Costco. It was on sale for $119 because my Ninja needed to be replaced, which it did still replace it. But you get three containers at Costco. And and it's I thought it was only going to be for wet foods, so I wasn't thrilled. But they said you can grind coffee in it. I've been grinding spices and stuff. So, And if you buy stuff at Costco and buy stuff, coming from me, I mean mostly kitchen appliances, if you don't like it, if it breaks, they'll take it back. Like I get, I got a new Vitamix because it was seven years in. Something was starting to sound funny. They looked it up. I didn't have the receipt. They looked it up and took care of it. With this, I went in there and I bought it before it was on sale, like a week before. So I came in, I'm like, hey, they're like, here, have some cash money. So I love Costco. I love Costco too. Do you have it on? Okay, let's see it. And sometimes I'll go ahead and just put it on the side a little bit to get all that in. And it's just this easy. Like, this is the whole recipe. Is that not crazy? Very easy. Right? And you did you see how it looked like there were some big pieces? That's actually how power, powdered it got. It's not big pieces. Isn't that crazy? So it's very, very powdery. And I like it that way. You could just pulse it and keep it a little bit thicker. Um, I find that the powders, it makes it a little easier for the flavor to go into every nook and cranny. And that's why I like it. And when you're using a blender like I am today, I'm going to try and keep using the same blender without changing the blade. So I'm going to go from the most simple flavored item to the most complex. So just think about that too as you kind of go along, but here we can taste it. Mm, it's really good. Does, is there any questions about that? Oh my gosh, I'm, look, I'm looking at you and not the question. If you guys have questions. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm so them. used to seeing the questions myself that when we're in Zoom, oh, I'm yeah. like. Sorry about that. I was watching you instead of the chat. I have to multitask. I'm glad I'm that interesting. <laughs> well, I, I, I it was kind of cool. So, um, uh, let's see. Here is uh, well, question: What are you making? So you must have come in late, and that's fine. We're doing a DIY giftable stuff like uh, a beefy bouillon and oat parmesan, as well as a golden gravy. And let's see. There's uh, uh, Jennifer saying her Benson's table tasty clumps. Mine does too. So maybe if we get one of those desiccant packs, it won't. I never thought about that. That was, we learned oh, so much. Yes. That will help a lot. Now it's not always perfect. And sometimes it depends on the actual blend itself. So here's, see, and you, I don't, I didn't bring any of my lids, but you could put a little lid on top and you could just cut out a piece of holiday fabric. With Rick, what what are those Rick Rack scissors? What are the the zigzag um, zigzag scissors? I know what you mean. They're they're There's like a name like, pinking like, shears. Pinking shears, yeah. Ah, and and so you can get these jars at the thrift store. Get new lids. They're not very expensive. Get a yard of of whatever holiday you're celebrating fabric. Cut them out. And then you can do this in, uh, in the class on Saturday in Kathy's Cooking Club, we are going to make soup mixes. So we're going to use larger jars, but it's going to be stuff people can just put in their slow cooker, put in their Instant Pot. And what a wonderful gift it is to give a meal to someone that they can make easily 
you know, when they don't feel good, maybe they have seasonal affective disorder, maybe the holidays are hard for them, or maybe they just need a break. And I sometimes I like doing that more than giving someone a gift certificate to a restaurant. Just because then you have the person has to get up, they have to shower, they have to put clothes on. <laughs> I'm talking to me now, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> unless, they, unless they get to go or do DoorDash from that restaurant. Right. And I'm not saying it's a bad idea to do that either. And all, I support all of our vegan restaurants, but sometimes I look at the person and I go, you know, they're having a hard time right now. Is the hard time they need to get out of their house or they need to be able to make their life easier in their house? But you can't go wrong with giving someone some oat parmesan, you know, if you're giving this outside the whole food plant-based community, they will still like it. And you can call it pasta sprinkle, right? So it doesn't give them what weird thing is in there. It's just a pasta sprinkle. I would put some herbs, maybe some sun-dried tomatoes in there or some tomato powder. Um, it can a be jalapeno, really jalapeno powder. Oh, that would be good. And I love Ooh, chipotle powder. powder, smoked paprika, smoked paprika. Like I'm just, I'm big on like, once it gets cozy like this, I'm like all in on rosemary. So, so I just love it, but you could do something like that. And I would, if you're giving it outside of our normal community, put salt in it is what I would do just to make it, a, you know, so if you're doing for your whole family, you still can make this for them. If you're, you know, they're going to like it a little better. I do some things differently sometimes, Chef AJ. I don't know if you do that as well. Like if I'm doing a potluck dish for people on the, like Elizabeth's plant pod in Chapel Hill, I can go all in on the super healthy. But if I'm doing it for just a general gathering, sometimes I'm trying to tempt in the newbies or the new to vegan people. Hey, have you gone to that farm sanctuary yet? The pig sanctuary by you? She hasn't emailed me. Well, then email her, you know. I know. I'm so, be I'm behind on my emails. I'm, I'm a very naughty person. You're behind right on your emails. Now. Welcome to my world. Hey, Kathy, somebody's asking, because you do a lot of YouTubes, what's the super sticker? People are asking where the super sticker is. What is that? Oh, it, when it's down there, it's actually a way to show your appreciation to whoever's doing live, like Chef AJ. So if you super, if you super chatter, which sounds, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm 12 and I should be like playing a video game, but someone actually, when we did the Black Friday, we did a four hour live for Black Friday where literally I was like, don't buy stuff. But if you're going to, what do you ask me questions so we can find the best thing? And someone, two people super chatted me. So basically it's, it's like a tip you give to Chef AJ. So Whoa. it's a very kind and generous thing to do. No, 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 that I know. I know what a super chat donation is, but what's the super sticker somebody's asking? Oh, I think you get a super sticker when you give you money. Oh, wow. So you, you tip and I think you get to pick a super sticker. Cool. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't understand that. Oh, that's okay. Well, thanks for explaining. You're welcome. Okay. So that was the hard one in a way. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to be putting some of the similar ingredients. We're making the golden gravy and the golden gravy is originally from outrageous oats. And if you ever used to buy gravy mix and Cheryl always wants to buy gravy mix. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I have golden gravy mix. <laughs> and so I'm going to be working on a brown gravy mix as well. But there's usually salt. Sometimes there's even oils and weird things in there. And this is so simple. And we'll even make some gravy so you can see how you use it. It's not that hard at all. So we're doing a cup of rolled oats and we're gonna do half a cup of nutritional yeast. So it's the nutritional yeast that, and so I say golden gravy instead of chickeny gravy, but basically it's a chickeny gravy. And you can do it two ways. I don't. The only time I remember getting this is like in junior high when they would have chicken patties. You get that kind of golden, non-milky gravy. So you would use this mix with water. 
If you wanted to make it kind of creamy and sumptuous, which obviously is my preference <laughs> from the words I'm using, um, you can use non-dairy milk. And if you guys want to, I can show you, I think I've shown you guys before how to make a quick oat milk, but we can make a quick oat milk and talk about that too. So put that in the chat while I'm doing this. Oh if my you God. Want. You, you, I got it. I got, I guess that now, so Susanna gave me, I guess this one is a super chat, but <laughs> I don't see the sticker, but thank you. And and somebody told me I'm supposed to ring a bell when I get one. Is that true? Some people do, but um, I think those are like, yeah, you do what you, you do. You just say, well, well you know, so, so somebody sent me like the most beautiful bell, two of them. One, it, one is purple and, metal, and one is glass. But when I ring those bells, it, like Bailey starts barking. So I thought this one kind of, <laughs> <laughs> I know, um, it's all about that. So this, the, the secrets are going to be kind of this little spice blend. And let me, let me get it where you can kind of see this. So we're going to use marjoram. Okay. We're going to use, Ooh, let's give you a name. Thyme, garlic powder, onion powder, which are two things you need to have in your life. We're going to use a little turmeric. That's going to help it be even more golden. And coriander adds this beautiful flavor. So if you don't have marjoram, you could use a little bit less oregano. And I think we've talked about this before, Chef AJ, because I think you said last time you didn't have marjoram. And what I would love for people to do as some homework, and I know everybody's rolling their eyes right now, but if you have oregano, marjoram, and possibly Mexican oregano, open them and smell them next to each other. And it will, it will magically tell you when to use what. I mean, obviously, there's Greek oregano, Italian oregano, and those have pretty spectacular uses. Mexican oregano has a little bit of lemon, a little bit of floral. Marjoram has a little bit more floral. So it creates a little bit of interest that you don't get in your everyday food. And that's a good reason to use it. So we're going to do a tablespoon of thyme. And actually, you can kind of see in here, this is my time for my garden I filled it up with. So you can see the leaves are a little bit bigger. Okay, then we're going to do a tablespoon of marjoram. You could do salt if you want to, but you don't have to. Most of the time, even though we do salt in our household, we don't add salt to mixes. And again, if you're going to give it away, that's when I'm more likely to add salt to it. Someone who's not going to be like, I have some friends who don't cook. So if I told them to salt it to taste, they wouldn't really understand. I'm going to do a teaspoon of coriander. And these recipe links are in the show notes. I'm but working you, on that. Yeah. Oh, they, sorry. They will be. And again, no, they will be. It's just, it's, it, it, it's hard to do it before the show starts, but that's what I do while you're doing your magic. Okay. So <laughs> they will eventually be there. But Very soon. <laughs> and we're doing a teaspoon each of onion powder and garlic powder. And we're just going to do just a wee quarter teaspoon of turmeric because we're using it for color, not for flavor. And there's no good, bad, or indifferent. But if you have onion and garlic powder and you are just having a bad day, you can just use that in any instant pot, stovetop, slow cooker recipe instead of cutting up onions and garlic and sauteing them. So, and I know it sounds like I'm spending a lot of time talking about sad things, but seasonal affective disorder is real and it affects a lot of people. And so while now is the best time to have a warm, cozy stew, it may just be a little bit too much for people to cut up all the things. Now, I will say this, and Chef AJ, this is for you and me too. I did buy the Breville food processor peel and um, dice. You one day I, have to come on my show, even if it's just for 15 minutes and show me how to do that. I am madly in love with it because, okay, so like two days after that, I got tendonitis really bad in my thumb, like really bad. And um, 
and perhaps I over chopped last month <laughs> and I did, <laughs> I did a dehydrator class. So like I did 20 pounds of onions and all these crazy things, but twice this week I've used the peeler to peel some Yukon gold potatoes to make mashed potatoes. And it does 90% of it. Like it's, it does so much better than I expected it to do. And I use the dicing, um, the dicing blade, I guess, or kit, and it was beautiful. So I'm going to be using it so much and I love it. So also if you're having some wrist problems or fing finger problems, it is expensive. I It was on sale on Amazon. I'm not sure if it still is. So it was, it's not a cheap item. So on sale, I got it for $3.99. I had the Breville, um, sous chef pro which is almost the same thing without the dicing kit but to get the dicing kit for it was going to cost two hundred dollars and have more to store so so kathy i want to use it to make pico de gallo so i'm mostly interested in learning how to do tomatoes and potatoes if you can teach me okay i'll see if i can now because you just have the ones that what is it the 10 is it the 10 or the 12 millimeter blade? Whatever the one is. There's another kit you can get, I think, for 8 and 16. But we'll see. I'm kind of really in love with it, so I'm thinking about it. <laughs> well, and I'm if, just going to blend this like I did before. If you don't want to do it on the regular show, let's just do like a, you know, we can do a quick one just at your convenience. Because I think people would like to learn. Because ne neither you or I, or I don't know anybody that gets anything for promoting Breville. But we just think it's a fabulous product well on the black friday live I, that we did where cheryl and i were talking i was really wanting it and everybody was really like get it you should get it you can take it off on your taxes you know and <laughs> i was like because i wanted it so bad and then i was feeling guilty but once i've gotten it now i'm like this is is exactly what i needed we're just going to blend this up we want to blend it up pretty well and so if i'm using like a neutral bullet or something like this. Sometimes if you just shake it a little bit, the stuff in the top falls down. Just be careful and mindful when you do this. And if you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. Okay. And it looks pretty similar, but it tastes different. I really, you know, I'm really pretty impressed. I'll show you so you can see, um, see around there. That's how tiny and powdered it got in the base, which is kind of nice. I, I do love my Vitamix and I'm not saying you guys need this, um, but, but I like it. And I know a lot of you ask me, <laughs> appliance question so i tried to tell you what's going on should we do oat milk or should i just pull some out of the fridge Did yeah, anybody... do some oat milk do some oat milk okay so um, let me just grab my regular vitamix blender you don't need a vitamix to do this i'm just not going to mix wet because i have one more dry mixture to do and it's it's just really so simple if it's your oat milk is only going to last for about three days, so you can make it as you want to. Also, oat milk can be slimy. There's a couple of ways to get around that. Oh, I also have to get um, a strainer. Let's get a strainer out of here or something to strain it in. But if it's it's cold right now here. And I keep the house fairly cold, so the water is not hot. In the summer, what I would do instead of four cups of water, I would do three cups of water and one cup of ice. If you have crushed ice or something like that that you can use, that's even better. You do not want to blend it super well. So like if I, if I was making cashew milk, I'm going to blend that down into a nut butter the best of my ability so I don't waste any cashews. Here, if I do that, the more I do that, the more slime is going to be created. So it's actually even less effort <laughs> to make 
a nice oat milk. So we're gonna, put, you can change the ratios to suit you. I use about one cup of oats, rolled oats. You can use soaked oat groats. You can use soaked steel cut oats if you want. I think that was two. I think I should start over. Do you ever do that, Chef AJ? Start over? <laughs> start start counting things and go, oh, oh where okay. was oh, I? Yeah. Oh, yeah, all the time. I, I thought you meant, do I ever start over? All the time, yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four. You, you're too entertaining, so I'm uh, losing my focus. <laughs> and if you want, let's say you wanted to make vanilla oat milk. Put a couple of dates in here. Yeah. Put a little bit of vanilla in here. So I'm going to put about four cups of water. Did you ever end up getting the Nutra milk? I did. And I've I've done a demo with it. And the way they do oat milk is different than I've seen anybody else do it. They soak the oats, pour off the liquid, and then put make the milk with those soaked oats. And you could totally do that here, too, if you wanted to. I noticed with their machine, it foams up a lot if you don't soak them. But it, I, I liked it. I like all the milk makers. These are handy dandy. These are my two favorite ones. And I think they're the most affordable. One is this Arc Mira that's in blue or teal. Sometimes it's on sale for as little as like $60. And it makes about two cups, one and a half to two cups. And it does heat so you can do soy with it. The Mio Mat is my other one. So if you guys want, I if I think even in the show notes, I say, go look at my milk maker page. So if you have some questions about milk makers, let me know. I'm trying a lot of them. And there's a lot of demos on YouTube. But the Mio Mat, I really like a lot too. And it's more of like makes four cups, kind of like this does. And I just like the guy who owns the company too. The Nutrimilk is amazing. And I think it would be especially great for people who do eat nuts or have spouses that eat nut butter. Don't you, you make peanut butter for Charles. Oh my right? God. That's, you know, it's funny because you buy something sometimes for one reason and, and you end up using it for another reason. And I was just getting tired of all the plastic jars and it's just, it's like two minutes to make like two pounds of peanut butter. And, it, and he says it's way better than any jar. And what, what he likes about it is, you know, when you put most peanut butters or any nut butters in the fridge, they get pretty hard. And this stays the texture he likes, which is, you know, soft enough to spread. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm done. I know you're shocked, aren't you? You're like, what? You're not done, lady. Um, and if you notice, I had my hand on here. So with a Vitamix or Blendtec, you do not want the milk to heat for oat milk. It makes it slimy. Yeah. And then all I'm going to do is just pour through a strainer. This is a really nice fine mesh doubled strainer. Sometimes I will even go ahead and put two strainers together and just get an extra strain. It all depends on how you feel. For us to make gravy, because you can actually, even without a mix or anything, you can just make gravy with homemade oat milk. So I've sauteed some mushrooms, put homemade oat milk, and very clearly, homemade. Store-bought is not gonna do the same thing. There's more starches here. In store-bought, they use, is it Amelie's? Amylase, Amylase, I've only read it. So I think it's Amylase, which is an enzyme that turns- Amylase? Starch, not, not Amylase, Amylase, that's Amylase. it, Amylase. Um, turns the starches into sugars. So we still have the starches here. And I don't know about you, but I love me some starch, right? That's why we're doing the starch solution. <laughs> okay. So, and then literally, I'm just going to pour this through the strainer. I prefer a strainer to a nut milk bag. I think also with oat milk in particular, it helps you cut down on slime because you're going to squish the slime out. I, 
I don't actually push on the oats very much in the strainer. And I'll show you how I do that. Like, and nut milk bags kind of creep me out because I feel like I can never get them clean. They bring out my germaphobic side. And I don't know why. So <laughs> that's all I got for you. <laughs> okay, let me get where I can get the handle near me. And so all you have to do is you're scraping around the edges. So you're opening up those little slots in the strainer, giving the liquid a chance to fall through. So it's that's all it is. And see how fast it did it? And you could keep going or not. And this, you could put in oatmeal. You could make dog treats with it. You can um, use it to thicken other foods. You could make overnight oats with it. You could just add it to your oat, slow cooker oats. You can put it in with some beans, leftover beans, rice, or veggies and make um, veggie burgers with it or veggie meatballs or something. So you don't even have to waste anything. It's kind of great. So I'm just going to put this over here. So there's a question. What do you think of the almond cow? I don't have it. Um, Gina is saying you're the plant milk appliance queen. I think you're the appliance queen in general. But my understanding of the almond cow is it it doesn't make a whole food. So with the natural milk, it's it's everything. It's a whole food. And it doesn't strain out all the stuff that a lot of people throw out. But I'll let Kathy give her two cents. Well, with Nutrimilk, it does grind things finer in the Nutrimilk than any of the others. So I do think you get more of a whole food from it, for sure. Um, the almond cow is just as expensive as the Mio Mat, sometimes more expensive than the Mio Mat. So I'll bring this back over so you can see. So, and this, I have, I do have feelings about the almond cow. The people who love their almond cow love it and I support you. So don't, don't take this as the wrong way. But this has heat. This doesn't strain, but it has this little um, this little uh, cylinder that helps things blend up really finely. The plus, which may not be the plus for the almond cow people, you don't have to strain it, right? Because it has a strainer in it in the almond cow. Here you do have to strain it. You saw how hard that just was. And then literally all I have to do is dump that out and scrub the strainer and it doesn't take it doesn't take much at all i can make soups in here i can make soy milk in here if you want to you can make soy milk in an almond cow a nutrimilk or the milky plant but you need to cook the soybeans first or cook the milk after you've made it so that with soy milk cleanup is no joke and i make soy milk in this every week and it's a lot easier to clean up one pot with soy milk also with the mia mat and soy milk when I used the soy bella, I would cook the soy milk for 10 minutes in the instant pot. It still tasted kind of green or bitter-ish. And I don't do anything else. The Mio Mat does it, which is one of the reasons why, obviously, it's my favorite. It being my favorite doesn't necessarily make it the right milk maker for you, which is why you should go read the milk maker things. Because like the Nutri-Milk is great. And you got to see what's in your budget. If you're a one person household that needs to make milk every two cups of milk every couple of days or once a week, the Arc Mirror is cheaper. It does all the same things that the Mio Mat does in a smaller footprint. Um, so I feel like the Almond Cow is quite expensive for what it does. And that is what I don't like. So it runs a cycle twice. It's quite quick. I always end up running it two to three times. The Mio Mat has like raw milk setting, which does slightly cook it, kind of like raw almonds. Think of that. There's like a cereal milk. So I just made almond milk actually the other day on the cereal milk to cook it. And it foamed with a frother for tea. And so there's just, you know, you make soy milk, smoothies, which is no heat. So you can make, if you're going to make oat milk in your Mio Mat, oat milk in your almond cow would be perfect because it doesn't have heat but you don't want to use cereal milk because it's going to make a sludge. And that's, you're looking for something more like Oatly. Does that help? And if you guys have more questions, like I feel like I know my, my milk makers really, really well. <laughs> and yep. I ha haven't tried everything, but I've tried a lot of them. There's a question. What's your favorite spiralizer? 
the ones I find at the thrift store. Um, and almost always it's that Pandero or Panet. It starts with a P. It's the most expensive one on Amazon. And I pick them up whenever I see them and give them away to people when I find them at the thrift stores. Um, because they're, they can be fairly expensive. I did just get a Kilner. I'm moving everything around, but like it, Kilner makes jars and they have some things that have little, I do something in them and they have a spiralizer jar. I just, so it's just one you manually spiralize with. Got that at Ross's for like $9. Ross's, TJ Maxx, Home Goods, lots of times you can find inexpensive um, spiralizers. Okay, so let me remember what I actually tell people to do. I never measure this. So I'm saying you can do a half, we'll do, we'll do like a small one. So we're going to use a quarter cup of the mix to about three quarters of a cup of um non-dairy milk and these recipes you could like 10 times it if you wanted and use a big blender especially if you're doing a gift it would be really easy so the first thing I'm going to do and this is with most of of the mixes because I also have like a creamy gravy one that we're not doing today but I think it's on healthyslowcooking.com if you want to get it is we just toast this up a little bit because we already saw right that with the oat parmesan, it gives it a better flavor. So that's all we're looking to do. There we go. So just kind of over medium heat. And since it's ground so smallly, is that actually a sentence, Chef AJ? Smallly? <laughs> Stuart Smalley? Stuart Smalley. <laughs> no, I'm like... <laughs> Welcome to Kathy's Cooking, where she will make up new words and teach you strange things. Um, it won't take long at all. And you're not trying to necessarily make it taste like nuts. You just, when you make a gravy, in general, the traditional way is you toast it so you don't get that raw flour taste. That doesn't really exist here, but it does develop flavors. And I can appreciate it. So therefore, I do that. You want a, spa a, a whisk. Why did I say spatula? And then I always feel like gravy is a little bit of this back and forth. It's going to be too liquidy. Then it's going to be too thick. Then you add some more liquid and you just kind of go back and forth. You want to take it off the heat when it's not quite as thick as you want it. And it'll thicken up naturally. So I'm going to guesstimate about three quarters of a cup of milk. And really when I make gravy, I'm all about the guesstimation of everything. Let me see if I can turn. Okay. Let you see from up here. So I'm just going to whisk this in. Now here's the thing, it's gonna seem like it's not going to settle in well. So look at all those pieces. Can you see all those little oat pieces, both from the mix and from the milk? And what's gonna happen is just like when you cook oats in water, it's gonna become a thickening agent. And so it's gonna kind of dissolve into its oatmeal goodness that we know. And you could add salt, pepper, other herbs. Like you could make this. Again, I'm stuck on rosemary, rosemary gravy, but you could also put in some brags. You could put, you could saute some mushrooms. See how it's thickening up there? How you can kind of see that. And I'm going to make it where it gets a little bit too thick so I can show you how to thin that out. I want to make sure to get all these little oat pieces in here so they can dissolve and become my thickener. Kathy, here's a question. I bought spiced chickpea flour at an Ethiopian market. Would Ooh. you guess it needs to cook like dried ch chickpeas or more quickly? Now say that the whole question, I'm gonna put a little more oat milk in because you saw how it got a little too thick. And say, say the question part one more time. I chickpea flour. 
spiced chickpea flour, you said though, right? Yeah, in an Ethiopian market. Would you think it needs to cook like dried chickpeas or more quickly? Oh, it's going to cook more quickly. It's a flour. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's just kind of like this. It's going to, you, you're not going to put it in the pressure cooker and cook it for, you know, an hour or something. And TF says, can you make soy milk in Arc Mira? Yes, you can. So the Arc Mira and the Arc Mira isn't like a real proper brand. I have no idea where it comes from. I've had mine and a bunch of my community have gotten them because I love it. I make, I'll put in some tea and some oats and water and a date. And actually I've done, um, done it with a little bit of vanilla too and some decaf Earl Grey tea and made a London fog. And I just strain it out and have a frothy, really nice drink. But you, here, I'll let you see this. I've turned off the heat. But see how that's great. And you can make it thicker, thinner, depending on what you want. So when I put this in the fridge, it's going to really thicken up. And then I will heat it up and probably add a little bit more um, non-dairy milk. And if you made this without, it would just look a little more clear. So it's real easy. Because I know a lot of people end up buying gravy packets and sometimes those can be several dollars. Like you could make enough for six months of this for what you could pay for, you know, one month's worth of gravy packets. So, okay. Any questions about that gravy or gravy in general? And, and again, the, I'm going to put this on the site. It's just not up yet. When you make homemade um, milk, and probably by now, there's just some little, a little bit will float to the bottom. So there's enough oat stuff in there. It's going to thicken it up for you, even though we had extra oat in what we just, what I just showed you. Any questions about that? Or should we move on to the delightful next bullion? <laughs> yes, it's very delightful. <laughs> um. Um, um, Gina says Paderno spiralizer. I think yes. that's what you were referencing. I have the spiruli. I think that's the one that's as seen on TV. Ooh, that sounds fancy. Yeah. And Justine is wondering where everybody's getting their dried soybeans because she says they're hard to find. Um, the ones I'm using right now are non-GMO. They're not organic. I had, I was sourcing some great organic ones on Amazon over the pandemic and ended up being on auto subscribe twice. So I just ran out of them, <laughs> but um, Laura's is the one that I use. I've not found a, 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 an organic one I would prefer, but I feel really good. And this, these um, Laura's soybeans have been making beautiful soy milk and I make soy yogurt out of that too. And that's been successful. And some people have some problems with that. So with the beefy bullion, we're taking a different kind of look at everything. So all of these are kind of that kind of chickeny nutritional yeast. Like it's, it's amazing to me that nutritional yeast both at the same time makes things taste cheesy or chickeny depending on where your brain puts it. But I love that. I love that for, um, <laughs> for it. And this dry mushroom, or this dry um, beefy bullion is based on mushroom powder. And mushroom powder can be a little bit pricey. You can get dried um, canisters of mushrooms, dried mushrooms at Costco, usually around this time of year. I would toast those a little bit in your oven or put them in the dehydrator till they're crispy and grind them into a powder. That is one of the cheaper ways. I get mine for free, mostly. And um, I'll let you see that. So when I use mushrooms, and I use mushrooms a lot, and I'll also go to Costco, which usually has those big, um, for a while they had the baby Bellas, for $3.99. So I was buying two of those. I'd slice them and just throw them in the freezer. But before I slice them, I pull out their stems and I just put them over to the side. And then I dehydrate them and keep them in a little thing until I have enough 
to make this. And actually, as I was cleaning out the counter, I found several places I had had containers of mush dried mushroom stems <laughs> stashed. So that's the way you can do this inexpensively. Maybe not today, but you can buy mushroom powder on Amazon as well. Let me um, get this recipe up. So we're gonna use a half a cup of mushroom powder for it. And you can even see, like I didn't, I often don't finally grind this as much. I just let it be. I will say, I feel like the beast makes things more finely ground than my ninja spice grinder attachment. Okay, so we've got half a cup of mushroom powder. We're gonna do a quarter cup of nutritional yeast still. And we're not really getting the flavor of it as much as um, we're just getting a little bit of that umami in that mid range added to the blend. I'm gonna use a tablespoon of tomato powder. You could use dried, not in oil, really dry crispy. And if they're not crispy enough, a lot of times they're just soft. Put them in your oven or dehydrator, dehydrate them until they are crispy and you could add those. Probably, I'm trying to, eight, maybe eight regular sized dried tomatoes. You might need a little bit more. Usually I make my um, cherry tomatoes into tomato powder, but this year I just went ahead and bought a big bag of tomato powder. So you can buy it and it's not that crazy expensive. It will last you forever. Keep it in a resealable bag in a dry place. Uh, another thing that I'm saying is optional, but I really would like to see you use it. I have ancho chili powder and I make my own. You can buy it too, so don't panic. But I just take the dried whole ancho chilies that you can usually get like at Walmart, cut the seeds out. I use kitchen shears, cut it open, remove the ribs and seeds, and then I cut them and then I put them in the dehydrator to get them crispy and then I just whirl them up. It's much cheaper to do it that way. So it's like, do you have more time or money? If you have plenty of money, then go buy the other and don't bother yourself with that. Uh, if you're in Rancho Gordo's Bean Club, recently you got, come on, let me get the ground rosemary out of there. There we go. Some new Mexican red chili powder. This would work as well, too. I know a lot of you guys are in the bean club. So I'm going to go ahead and put a half a tablespoon, which is an interesting choice I made there. <laughs> and then we're going to do a teaspoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of garlic. Oops, teaspoon, not tablespoon of onion and garlic powder. And this one is a little more complex, but it's I find there's not really a good substitute for, for this vegan stuff. We're gonna, uh, as far as like a beefy bullion, except for maybe um, like better than bullion, but that has, most of them have oil, salt, all kinds of things that we're not really looking to do. I have some ground bay leaf that I'm gonna use a half teaspoon. You could take like one small leaf and put in here, just make sure that it all gets ground up because if not, you, you it could hurt you. So, and then we're gonna use a quarter teaspoon of ground rosemary. And if any of these things are things you don't like, ex pretty much except for the mushrooms, if you don't like mushrooms, I would just skip this recipe. Um, but it all kind of comes together. And when you smell it, it's definitely a more complex. So you could put, maybe if you didn't have any ancho chili, you could put paprika or smoked paprika in there. And that would be a really good substitute. I'm trying to think of, with a bay leaf again, just make sure you're grounding it really well. Everything else, tomato powder may be a little bit wonky, but you could use really dry sun-dried tomatoes too.
So Julie says, is the peel and dice part of the sous chef attachment or do you have to get it separate? Where'd she go? Oh, she's blending. Okay. I always talk to people when they're blending. I think it's separate. I remember paying more for it. For which? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear No, no I forgot you were blending. The Is the peel and dice part of the sous chef attachment? Is it separate? For the sous chef, yeah, it is separate. You, there is no way. I didn't see a way to get the peel, but I could be wrong. But what you have to do if you have, it looks the same. Okay. So like when I'm looking, I don't understand. But something's different about the post that holds on things. So if you have the the sous chef, you have to buy the $200 kit. The $200 kit contains another um, bowl with with the little spindle in addition to the dicing blades and that's it and so now you have to store two separate containers because you're also i don't i don't think but i don't know that your sous chef attachments would necessarily fit on the other bowl but it seems i, I can check that later before you and i do our our live about the breville but that was one of the reasons why I decided just to get this. So I get the peeling disc, I get the dicing disc, and I wouldn't have to store two food processor bowls because that's that's a lot of hard storage right there to me. This is one of my favorites. And here we go. And there's like a little dust cloud coming up. So usually when you grind anything so small, it's nice to wait a little while before you open it. So what would you use this for? And actually in thinking of it right now, I would, we could turn this into a brown gravy by adding some oats, maybe like a half a cup of oats. What did I do for the uh, gravy? The gravy. Got a great question when you're ready. Okay. I would, um, I think you can make this into gravy with one cup, half a cup of rolled oats in there. And if, we, if we want to make mushroom gravy for a mushroom lover, do we need to do anything special with the mushrooms or just put them in? Do you mean for the, for this mix or for making one from scratch? like with fresh mushrooms. I don't know. Okay, That's so. Fun. Reading the question. All right, so here, I'll give two answers then. For this, I think that, you know, if you wanted to make this really special in a Christmas present, what I would do is get some of those mixed mushrooms and I'm trying, I know I have some, some over here somewhere. No. I do. I just rearranged over here. Dang it. Okay, anyhow. So it's this big one and it has like oyster mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, and button mushrooms. And they're sliced. I would dehydrate those. I would pulse them in a food processor to give them a few little like bigger flakes. And you can mix in about a quarter to a half a cup of those. And it would be delightful because that size would reconstitute as they're making the gravy. They would probably need to add a little bit more liquid, but that's that's what I would do for that. If I was making just mushroom gravy, like Uncle Bob's coming over and he loves him some mushroom, mushroom gravy, I would use that homemade oat milk, but I would just go ahead and saute a variety of mushrooms. So like if you could get slice shiitake, slice, you know, oyster and just pull them apart. Go to the Asian market because they have all the mushrooms, all of them. Um, and at Costco, sometimes you can get some chanterelles or something cool and you could chop those up, saute all those, then add the oat milk and go from there and maybe season it with just salt, pepper. Mushrooms love rosemary too, just like me. That, those are my two things with the if you're using it as bouillon then all you have to do is just take a couple of tablespoons and put it in your favorite stew so let's say you wanted to make beefy stew we could use this as our base instead of mushroom broth 
maybe get some um, whole or cut and quarter button mushrooms, add some carrots, celery, maybe saute some sauteed onions or onion powder and garlic powder, and maybe a few fresh herbs. So I might do um, a few sprigs of fresh thyme and a sprig of rosemary if I could. And you can then have this kind of lovely stew that you could serve over rice or mashed potatoes. But yeah. Any other questions? Let me look. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's just so nice to give people things like this, you know, and you can write out really nice personal notes about how to make them or what you suggest. So you could be like, make this golden gravy and don't forget to serve it over, you know, um, air fried tofu and waffles or give them an idea or something. Or maybe you could also give them a really nice um, whisk, put a nice wooden spoon with it. So it can still be inexpensive to you and look really special. And it can be something that's really really used in the kitchen. Hmm. What are you going to do for Christmas? And what did you do for Thanksgiving? Oh, for Thanksgiving. So one thing we always do every year is the day before Thanksgiving, Fiction Kitchen has like a Thanksgiving special. So they have other things you can get, but they always have the Thanksgiving special. And so we've been doing that even over the pandemic, we got takeout for that. So we've been doing that I think since the year they did it. And there, we we had found out that day, the day before Thanksgiving, our friend's son had been exposed to COVID that we were going to spend Thanksgiving with. So we got there and Dilip from the Triangle Vegetarian Society was like, so you haven't been to the Triangle Vegetarian Society Thanksgiving for a long time. It's been 2019. He's like, there's some spots available. Some people got sick. So we went there. And it was delightful. And I remember why we used to go every year because I got to have a bite of all these really great vegan things and I didn't have to make any of them. And that was kind of lovely. It was very treaty. And we actually went live from the buffet. So if you guys want to see, I show the buffet in the beginning, we go and walk through it. And then some of my people were alone for Thanksgiving in my community. So we went live and had Thanksgiving dinner with them. We sat them at the table. <laughs> so it was delightful to spend time with everybody. Um, and I think I want to get back in that habit again. It's the largest vegan Thanksgiving in the country. And it has been, it's been going on for a long, long time. For Christmas, it looks like we're going to be staying home for all of December because I the traveling really kind of dysregulated me a little bit. I loved going and getting to see Chef AJ and going to the Best Life Conference because that was awesome. If you guys get a chance to do that, you totally should. Um, and that's where I got a lot. I, actually, I can show you some of my stash. We actually got a different suitcase so I could bring home some California balsamics. And I got some of the um, local spicery stuff. So like it, it was, and we ate some of the best food there and had the best time. Then we came back and we turned around pretty quickly and went and traveled and drove up the East Coast. And I, I don't know if it's from doing all the things because when I sat down, I was like, why, why am I so stressed out? And then I thought, oh, you know what? Earlier this year was I got diagnosed with fatty liver disease and I had a liver biopsy and I did the McDougal program. Oh, because I'm like, oh, that's old, old news. <laughs> so for December, we're really settling in and letting ourselves just really enjoy some of the stuff that we've created and really stay home and eat the lovely foods that we've been making and kind of just spend time just me and Cheryl. And, um, and then we're going to do a bunch of lives for people who are alone for the holidays too. We're, I cleaned up the living room. We're going to be doing some decluttering stuff. And um, yeah, so that, that's where we're looking. So last night I had the best dinner and I was so happy. And it was just a giant thing of 
compliant mashed potatoes. It was mashed potatoes with a little bit of oat milk and some salt and pepper and roasted garlic, like um, a dry spice roasted garlic, which is my new thing. And some of that oat mushroom gravy I was telling you about. And I was like, there's nothing I could even spend a million dollars on that would taste better than that did to me last night. So that's what we're kind of hoping to do. And have you heard of the the ladybug vapor steam cleaner? Because we've been playing with it. Oh my gosh, Cheryl is doing some amazing things. And so she, we're, we're taping the demos we did. So she, the cork floor behind me, I wouldn't let her show the before picture on it because it was horrible. We thought we were just going to have to replace the floor, but it cleaned it. And then I cleaned out over here by the dining room and she did the windows and we had a chipmunk living in our house. <laughs> so we're sterilizing the floors from that. And so basically, I guess we're going to eat cozy, compliant food, be on lives and clean to an inch of our lives is pretty much what our plan <laughs> so is. So you're going to be live on Christmas day? I think so. Me well, too. I'm doing it really early though, because my guest is Shane, Shane yeah. Martin from Shane and Simple, and he wants to be able to spend the day with his family. So we're going to do a little cook along, but so we're going to be starting 7 a.m. Pacific time. Ooh, that sounds Believe like for me, I'll be wearing a hat. Listen, Holly wants to know if I use the beefy bouillon as a broth, what amount do I use? For example, is it one tablespoon per one cup of water? Let me see if I actually say anything because I hate I hate telling you and I will give you an answer at the same time. Um, yeah, I don't think I said it in this in this post. Because to me, it's to taste. It Because it really depends on what you're going to be using that broth for. So if I was going to make a ramen, even if it was with carrot noodles or like um, mushroom noodles, like the place that Chef AJ gets the mushroom noodles, right? I would probably use a little bit more, probably maybe even twice as much, maybe two tablespoons per three cups, three to four cups maybe even more. Actually, I probably would use more. I probably would use a quarter cup to three to four cups. If I was just putting this in a chili to give it a little bit of beefy umami stuff, I would probably put a tablespoon in. And even if you go and you make my um, bouillon cubes that are super simple and you can gift them, but they have to be frozen. So that, but, um, oh, actually, let me see. Cause I use some of my fancy ice cube trays <laughs> because I, they were, my normal ones were dirty. A regular ice cube tray is two tablespoons. And that's about two tablespoons of my bullion makes about one of those little ones because it's not concentrated. But you guys have to see this. See, I can do this without making a mess. It's so cute. Oh. Isn't it cute? No, yeah, it's an owl. It is an owl and it's bullion. So you can make some of these cute bullion cubes of, of either in any one of them. And you can you can make the bullion the way you want. But if you go to healthyslowcooking.com, you get everything but the instant pot version if you look up bullion. Plant-based instapot.com, you can get the instant pot version, which is slightly different. You have to add some liquid to get it to come up to pressure, but you can literally get a slow cooker, Dutch oven, whatever, cut up two big onions, like in quarters or eighths, spread them out. You are taking the skin off. You are taking the ends off. This is not broth. We're making bouillon. We're going to eat everything mostly that goes in here, maybe about four carrots, if they're small, maybe one giant carrot that you could spiralize, cut that up, um, a few stalks of celery. Then I usually, I grow thyme. So I'll go out and I'll get a few sprigs of thyme, maybe four or five, but you could use dry thyme and you can leave, no, leave it without any herbs. And you cook that. In the slow cooker, I just put it on high for four hours, low for eight hours. And if it's the right amount, if you that's for about a four quart slow cooker. If you have an eight quart, you're going to need to double or triple it. 
and then you puree it with some nutritional yeast. Can't use nutritional yeast? Leave it out. This is your bullion. It's not my bullion anymore. You could have put mushrooms in there. You could have put garlic in there. You could put parsnips. You know, you can put just about anything. I wouldn't put um, cruciferous vegetables in it because that's going to make it taste a little bit funky. And then you just puree it and I put it in ice cube trays and I freeze it. And then usually, because I, I made about three three of these size bags at once. And then for any soup, stew, anything I want to do. And like with this broth here, if you are now getting off caffeine or maybe not having coffee or tea as much, but you would like some sort of warm beverage, you can go ahead and dissolve a tablespoon of this in about a cup and a half of water. See how, what fits your taste. And you can drink it as like um, a savory drinking broth. That's another thing you can do. Yum. <laughs> well, thank you. Of course. And, oh, and I can show you. So like you can get a lot of these little jars at like, I think I got some of these at World Market. You can get, I got some nice Kellner jars at Ross's. Use the little jelly jars. You might find some of those on sale for the summer. And it makes it look really pretty. Now these lids, these bamboo lids, you can get on Amazon. And these are from uh, the Wee Vegan Yogurts that I can't have anymore because they have coconut in them but I still have lots of these jars left. <laughs> and with this little bamboo top, and they're about a dollar, like look how pretty that looks. So just kind of think, you know, nobody wants you to go in debt to give them a present and something that you make yourself. And when you're making these, you can make enough for you to get through the winter and to give away. So hopefully it makes everybody's lives easier. Nice. Thank you. Tracy says, will you have any pies for Christmas? Probably not, but ooh. <laughs> I just happened to have my not pie because I had to photograph it. And this is um, Sophus compliant. So I think you'll it's a little bit smushed, but I, I don't usually decorate it this nicely, except I, I did use it for a photo shoot. Oh my God, that looks like a, some kind of apple pie. It is an apple pie with a magical crust. Um, so the uh, crust, you can tell it's a sweet potato. It's just one of the more roundish sweet potatoes. I baked it, cut it, left the skin on mashed it down so it actually will cut into slices and you can serve you it just like really, a pie you really are a genius oh, that looks i'm amazing. really proud of it i just did this this year um and i did it in two different classes so i'm wanting to make some more like it because you could use the white sweet potato and then you could do different seasonal stuff the apples oh i just God, uh, i want to eat that right now it's almost lunchtime I want you to eat some with me. I wish I could share it with you because like, and usually instead of, I literally did this by hand and took every little slice, but I usually just clump it up. So it doesn't have to be this, this fussy and it smushed a little bit, but I did make a little apple rose. You could even keep making an apple rose all the way around if you wanted. Cause I tell you what, what's going to impress your friends who want like, I don't know, pecan pie or sugary pie, something that looks pretty. I mean, you know? so so there's really no crust. It, it is literally an orange sweet potato. It is. And let's see if you can. And then did you, did you bake it again? No, I didn't. No, but you could warm it up if you wanted to. Can you kind of, yeah, you can kind of see the skin right there. Okay. You are, you are, you're incredible. And, and uh, Catitude said, are you going to do a YouTube video about that? I'm thinking of, of cutting out because it was in a class. So I'm going to see if Cheryl can cut it out because I was going to go do some research because it just popped in my head and I didn't think I've ever seen it before. And it sounds like you haven't seen it before either. I'm so, blown. My mind is blown. Mind blown right here. Yeah. So, so speaking of pies, 
this kind of pie is what we're going to be having. And do you know what? You can eat this for breakfast. You can it eat is, that all day it's, long. It's food. It's food. Yeah. And, and I know because I did it for the fabulous 40s group as well. Because so when I made it for my regular class, and it just depends on your diet, if you're doing salt or not, if you are doing some salt, and, and by that I mean miso, if you put a little miso in the date caramel, that makes it a little more sumptuous. So if I was making this and taking it to Sad Eater's House, Standard American Diet, I would have a little miso on there. I also would have saved off some of the date caramel to maybe do some sort of spiral and give them a little bit extra. And Chef AJ, you make that pear whipped cream. That would be right. really nice to have on the side. So just cut a piece out and then have a little bit of Chef AJ's pear whipped cream. And you could do this with, with um, what are the pears? What's the name of the pears that don't break down easily? They're the golden ones, right? The there's, kind of there's, brown. there's Bosque. There's uh... Bosque, I think. One doesn't break down very much, and those would be okay because you're sautéing them, or just chop them up in the Breville, in the chopper, in the dicer, and then it's all going to look perfect. And that's another way you could do it without having to. I these apples. I sliced in the Breville using the slicing blade. So you can use your regular food processor has a slicing blade too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, this and the other thing, I we ate all of it because I, I had to shoot it again. So I made another Thanksgiving dinner over the weekend. And I don't know that I've seen this exactly before either. So a whole cauliflower and I make, a, I put it in a dish and in the bottom, I put some bouillon cubes some poultry seasoning and stuff like that. So it kind of ends up making an au jus. And then I take my cauliflower and put it in there. Obviously I've trimmed away all the greenery and things like that. And I make um, a paste with um, non-dairy yogurt. So I use soy yogurt. The closest McDougal compliant is Kite Hill because most regular yo vegan yogurts have coconut of some kind. It doesn't, it has almonds. So if you have an allergy, it, it's not that it's super low fat. I mix that with nutritional yeast. I think garlic and onion powder, a few spices and a poultry spice blend. And when you put it over it, it literally looks like a turkey. And it's kind of crazy. So I'm going to be putting that recipe up. Um, if you guys... Um, if you guys email me, it might speed me up. It might not, but it might. <laughs> I'm so behind on so many things. But um, I did just take pictures of that, this, the mushroom gravy. And I made some um, confetti vegetables. I just used the shredder on a food processor with green cabbage, red cabbage, um, carrots, so you could use any kind of cruciferous crunch. And then I sauteed that with mustard and dill. And I, I probably put a little Nutra bouillon in there, but I used the California balsamic. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find it. This one, have you tried this? Let me shake it up so you guys can see it nice. Um, I did not think this was gonna be one of my favorite California balsamics but it is the garden dill mustard seed balsamic. It's crazy on cabbage. So Cheryl usually won't eat cabbage, even though she's Polish, I'm bringing her into her Polish roots <laughs> with all these things, but it's just magical. And it's so good that when I first made this, I put some of this on and that's when I added additional dill and additional mustard and made a sauce out of it. But so you have, and for the original class, I had made some mashed potatoes and I served it that you did a plate of mashed potatoes. Then you did these confetti veggies, then a slice of that cauliflower turkey and then gravy. And, um, and we've eaten it three different times in the past two months, like the whole thing, because it's so good. And it's all completely compliant, which is kind of amazing. 
So hopefully that helps. Yummy. (laughs) Yeah, I love his product. I'm going to actually be having a brunch with him on Sunday. Oh, I'm jealous. Please tell him that I'm madly in love with this one and I would have never thought about it. And I do have some of the others, like obviously you saw I got a whole bunch, but I want to try some of them in sparkling waters for mocktails like the pumpkin pie spice and maybe with a little bit of bitters and there are non-alcoholic bitters. And I think I'm trying to remember, let me go grab that really quick. Cause I know I like, uh, that's when I like the fruity flavors, like the lemon and the peach. If I'm making a, I call it an Italian soda. Oh, and so good. And so I just wanted to show you in case, um, you guys are like, I can't have bitters because a lot of bitters have alcohol in them, but not all of them. I get um, a mocktail box every month right now. And so it's all completely zero alcohol. And so all the bitter has a whole line of zero alcohol bitters. Let me just add a lot of yummy flavors. And you could use that in a bunch of different things too. Uh, Kathy, Joyce wants to know if those are raw apple slices on the pie. My guessing is you sauteed them or cooked them because otherwise- I did. I actually um, sliced them and then I just sauteed them in the same big pan that I made the gravy in today. So, you know, not a tiny saute pan, but a generous one. And I just sauteed them over medium heat until they softened and- because I put a lot in there, put too many in. Yeah, so I did that. And then if you're going to make a design like this, then you want to let them cool. I didn't exactly. I have kind of those fire hands. (laughs) You got to show me how to make an apple rose sometime. I learned how to make a strawberry rose when I was at True North recently from Chef Bravo. Ooh, well, you know, all I did was take, so let's say this (laughs) is an apple slice with the core. So I cored the apples. And this one, it's nice if you peel them for texture, but for this one, I wanted to have a little bit of the skin for color. Um, So you've got that half moon going this way. So first you roll that one up and then you just take another one around and you just keep doing that. And you could do it until it fits right on top and you have that big old rose. I don't think that would be easy to cut. And I think it would and be a time let down. Nice. Well, Kathy, it's always fun spending time with you. Come back sometime and teach me the peel and dice because I am challenged with technology and cooking equipment. You're going to love it. And I was able to figure it out pretty quickly. I had to read the instructions. So it's not something that's intuitive. And I would be happy to show you. You know what I say? Kathy reads the instructions so you don't have to. (laughs) Oh, and speaking of that, hearing you say that brought a flashback. I'm like, don't forget, you guys, I've got a sale going on till the end of the year. So the Ninja Creamy Experience, which is where Chef AJ first said that, <laughs> it's on sale for 50% off for $49. And if you're interested in Kathy's Cooking Club, it's 50% off probably till the beginning of January. So hop on it and join in and hang out with us more. Nice. Thanks so much, Kathy. And you'll come back at the beginning of the year and I can't wait to see what you'll do. I don't know oh. what you'll do. Me either. (laughs) Have a great time, you guys, and have a wonderful holiday season. And just take a little bit of time for yourself just to rest and relax and recuperate. Same goes for you, Chef AJ. Well, I'm going to be busy because I'm, okay, so let me tell you what I have. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I have so many people wanting to get on the show. And when I went to regular programming, I just only had 30 dates a year for them. So I'm going to try to get them all on the last three days of the year and like just do a marathon for 40 hours. And just other than sleeping, I'm not going to shower or I guess I'll eat got to eat, right? That's more important than showering. So we're going to see, but then starting January 1st, I'm taking weekends off. Those shows will be pre-recorded because I've been working seven days a week since March, 2020. 20. So doctor's orders, that's what they said at True North, but uh, I got to get through the end of the year and then I'm going to chill. You should eat during the live so you can show everybody what you're eating. You know, I might, I might do that. I think that's going to be a a pre-recorded analyze where I'm going to really try to do a chef AJ marathon. So, you know, kind of like the twilight zone marathon, but it'll be (laughs) all all the guests I couldn't get on. And um, so I, because I feel bad and I don't like it hanging over my head. So 
Uh, well, big hugs to you and let me know if there's ever anything I can do to help out. Yes. Oh. Teach me how to use my peel and dice. It's been sitting there for a year. Like, I don't know how to do it. So done. That's done. Right. And we can do it as a live. You know, it doesn't have to be at your regular spot either. We can just always, you can do it during the Champagne Day Marathon. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you're not, I don't think that's the best time for you to learn it, but maybe before that happens, we can hop on and do it real quick. You taught me my Ninja Creamy. So thanks so much, Kathy. Oh, have a great time. Thank you. And thanks all to you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. I forgot to say that this book bonus that my publisher has put together till the end of the month is for U.S. addresses only because he's offering free shipping and there's lots of bonuses you get if you buy it. And so let me tell you what they are. You will get um, a video of a two hour class I did. It's a dessert class. You'll get another video of other desserts and holiday class. You get a lot of stuff, I swear. And uh, um, you'll get 24 bonus, 25 bonus recipes from Joanna Merzer, who's Glenn Merzer's wife. So it's a, it's a great deal. And I hope you'll check it out. The link is below. Please come back tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific time. We have healthy skin from within with Dr. Jessica Pratt. She is a plant-based dermatologist in Manhattan. And I think it's neck and neck between who we get more questions for, Dr. Lyle, Dr. McDougall, or Dr. Krant. But think about it. Everybody has skin. Take care of yours. Stay out of the sun. That's what I do. Take care.